Okay everyone, this could be my last night of field work in the forest. Um, it's been a bit of an adventure, I was a bit naive going into it, I thought it was going to be two weeks but it's looking like it's going to be almost a month by the time that everything's finished up. Um, it's been a lot of physical hardship to be honest, it's been one of the toughest field trips I've been on, it's been sand flies of at night and murder, mosquitoes. Um, I fell on a log bridge about a week ago and banged my shin and having to spend a lot of time, you know, carefully tending that with antiseptic to make sure it doesn't turn into some horrible tropical ulcer. And a few days ago, um, I guess unsurprisingly after many nights wandering through flooded forests with, with um, boots that never got dry. I got a fungal infection in my foot that, that was so painful that I was having trouble walking. I'd been trying to use some antifungal that I brought from um, Australia that claimed to be broad spectrum but it was av doing absolutely nothing and then when I told the others one of the guys, Joel, brought out this tube of what was called quadriderm because it has four different antifungals in it and, and said you know that seen other people use this and clear up all sorts of strange um, and extreme fungal problems. I was a bit sceptical to be honest, but had nothing to lose. I tried it out and to my surprise, within a day the pain had gone away and I mean it's, it's not like my foot's as good as new yet, but at least I can, I can function so I'm sort of happy to get out there again. The, the trips it took a while to sort of materialise what it actually was, but we're doing comprehensive surveys of amphibians and um, snakes and lizards at, um, at night. So our working day runs from roughly 2pm when we head out to the forest and we finish around midnight. So it's quite a long working day and given that it's you know, looking like going to take up a month by the end of it, it's quite a, it's a made, made my holiday feel a bit like work actually. And there have been times, to be frank, I mean, I, I chatted online with um, a friend Kai and he said, why, remind me why you do this again. And I said, there have been times on the trip when if there was an option of bowing out and, and disappearing back to the city in a nice hotel, I probably would have taken it. But the practicalities just never allow that. I mean, basically, down, you know, 500 kilometres down a road that goes by the name of Highway, but it was a highway in the 1980s and it hasn't been maintained very much since. And it's more like a full drive adventure track and there's very little traffic along it. And so, you know, I reconciled early on that I basically had to go the distance with this group because there's just no no other way out. That said, um, you know, you, you spend a month in the rainforest and accumulate incredible experiences. I mean, all, all the guidebooks said that the wildlife isn't particularly abundant in the Amazon and that's certainly been borne out, but if you're spending night after night in the rainforest, you'll, you'll see things. I mean, there's been goliath tarantulas, as, as big as your hand wandering around. I mean, there's, there's enormous frogs that I didn't even know existed. A bigger, uglier you know, brother of um, cane toads as well is this this huge brown toad with it oozes yellow, sort of evil looking poison from its um, poison glands and apparently can shoot up to two meters um, into, into the eye. And, and early when I was, we had one and I was taking photos, it was sort of doing this, blowing itself up and posturing towards me in the camera and I was, I was genu genuinely nervous that, that I'd get a, an eyeful of this disgusting um, uh, venom. Lots of beautiful little frogs as well, you know, like Kaisikus photogenic um, creatures that I they managed to get photos of. And we've caught about 20 odd well, 30, I think we're up to about 30 now, 30 different snakes of maybe 15 odd different species from um, 
mostly harmless um, colubrids and the like, but they'd also we caught a coral snake and there have been three or four um, pit vipers, which are you know very very evil looking. Things. I mean, sim sim similar in broad outline to a rattlesnake, and when you catch them, they, their tail goes nuts as well. So you can see the close um, evolutionary link between pit vipers and, and rattlesnakes, and probably how how the rattle evolved. Actually, you know, it's probably started out as a um, this waggling tail as a as a lure for for their prey, and then the rattlesnakes elaborated that into some a form of um, defense, a warning to the buffalo and the like not to step on them. There have been, you know, mammal sightings as well. There's, um, chattering monkeys. Saw a, a tamandua, which is an ar a anteater that lives up in the trees and got this weird prehensile tail wandering along the road last night. Um, peccaries. Um, saw a parka one, one night. It's a little oversized rodent about the size of like a I guess a small corgi with his brown and white brown color chestnut sort of with white stripes broken into spots which froze and in um in the spotlight and got a good view of before it ran off and we've also been eating them as well because the local people hunt them here I mean as a sign of my naivete on on this issue or having Parker for dinner, and the others were dropping these little what looked like stones out of their mouth, and I was thinking, what what is this? And then I I got one myself, and it's so naive that I was thinking, what part of the anatomy would would create these these stones? Is it some sort of kidney stones or what? And then I asked one of the others what it was, and then he gave me this explanation, and I felt stupid when I realised it was it was lead shot from obviously hunting the the creatures. And another time we, we um, stopped at a farm to get some eggs and they, they sold us some eggs and then they also did, said, do you want some beef? I'm um, carny boy and a sort of nudge, nudge, wink, wink, which I, you know, completely sailed over my head at the time. But later on, someone explained to me that it wasn't actually beef, it was tapir meat, um, which was surprisingly good, <laughs> very, very tender and I feel a bit guilty about eating it, but... I mean, it's not, not going to change things whether I ate it or not, so I mean, chalk it up to experience. Lots of weird fruits too, kukwusu and acai growing in the forest, and um, in this part of the Amazon, in, in essentially most of the lowland Amazonia, there's, there's Brazil nut trees everywhere as well, and I even managed to collect a, a fruit of my own and brought it back to camp, and we cut it open with a machete, and got an experience to, to have my own Brazil nuts straight from the forest, which is kind of cool. So, all in all, it's been a good adventure. Um, Portuguese immersion experience as well, uh, except for Harto, most of the other guys don't speak any English at all, and their Portuguese is really hard to understand as well. It's like, it's like, um, I guess probably what it would be like encountering a broad Australian accent of the outback would be like to someone who's learning English, you know, there's lots of slurred words and they drop their S's and um, everything's said at a million miles an hour and for a long time I couldn't understand a word that they're saying and now I can understand them most of the time if they're talking to me and if they're talking among themselves I can understand, I don't know, 15-20% of what they're talking about. But um, still a long, a long way to go before I could declare myself fluent in in this version of Brazilian Portuguese spoken in Amazonia. We're on our way back now. the The survey design involves eleven modules, which are spaced fifty kilometres apart, and we've done from module five through to eleven. And we now, after tonight, we're heading back towards Manaus and the triple end with doing module four and module two. The original plan was that they would meet up with Adam there and um, he'll do the, the rest of the survey with him and then I'll head back to Ma Manaus.
but um, Hart has been raising the option of, of me hanging around, and he, he joked that it'll help me understand Adam because he has a bit of trouble with Adam's English, apparently, and Adam doesn't speak uh, much Portuguese. And I'm, I'm open to the idea. It's been kind of cool hanging out with the guys, and I've gotten used to used to the hardships now, So, and it seemed a shame to leave before the end. But there's the practical difficulties because it's already six of us in, in one vehicle and they got four crammed in on the on the back seat. So fitting one more person in would probably be unrealistic. And also there might be political um, considerations come into play as well because Adam's the visiting researcher and and it's it's obvious that they want to treat him well because after all these nights in in you know, rough jungle camps and various places. Apparently the last place has got air conditioning and a bathroom, which which sounds like heaven at the moment. So they may they may decide that, you know, that's just too ignominious squeezing him into a vehicle with six other people. So I might be dispatched back to Manaus anyway. But whatever happens, I'll 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 be prepared to, to go with it either either way. Anyway, it's getting close to five o'clock here. In, in Amazonia, so probably better head back and join up with Harto for our afternoon survey of calling frogs and then we move on to our systematic searches for frogs and, and, and snakes after dark. Hope everyone's been well <laughs> and health, healthier than I've been and um, look forward to getting some access to the internet again and, and finding out what's going on in the rest of the world. So yeah.